Welcome, my fellow attorneys, to the National Bankruptcy Academy video series. I'm your host, Robert Schaller, an attorney with over 34 years of experience and a registered certified public accountant. Today, we'll be discussing the statement of intention with a line-by-line -line analysis with real-world commentary. Every Chapter 7 debtor must file a statement of intent with respect to the retention or surrender of leased personal property and property securing a creditor's interest. A debtor's statement of intent is officially titled Official Form 108, Statement of Intention for Individuals Filing Under Chapter 7. The statement of intent requires the debtor to identify all secured property and all leased personal property whose lease term did not expire before the bankruptcy case was filed. Once identified, the debtor must disclose the debtor's intention as to that property. For any encumbered asset, like a vehicle, securing a vehicle loan, the debtor must disclose the intent to surrender or retain the asset, securing the debt. If the debtor intends to retain, the debtor must state whether the debtor intends to reaffirm the debt or redeem the property. As to unexpired leased property, the debtor must disclose the intention to assume or reject the lease. The Bankruptcy Code requires the debtor to state the debtor's intentions about such claims and provides for early termination of the automatic stay as to personal property if the statement is not timely filed. The same early termination of the automatic stay applies to any unexpired lease of personal property, unless the debtor states that the debtor intends to assume the unexpired lease if the trustee does not do so. The creditors and lessors identified in the Statement of Intent must match those creditors and lessors identified in other bankruptcy schedules. Similarly, the assets listed in the Statement of Intent must also match the assets identified in other bankruptcy schedules. To help fill out the Statement of Intent, use the information the debtor has already provided on the following forms. Schedule D, creditors who have claims secured by property. Schedule C, the property you claim is exempt and Schedule G, Executory Contracts and Unexpired Leases. Again, the debtor must explain what the debtor intends to do with property that is collateral for a claim. If the debtor has property that is collateral or security for a claim, the debtor must state what the debtor intends to do with that property. The debtor may choose either to surrender the property to the creditor or retain the property. The debtor may surrender the property to the creditor if the debtor surrenders the property to the creditor, the bankruptcy discharge will protect the debtor from any claim for the difference between what the debtor owes the creditor and what the creditor receives from a sale of the property, unless the court determines that the debt is non-dischargeable for some reason. The debtor may want to retain the property. If the debtor wants to retain the secured personal property, the debtor may be able to reaffirm the debt, redeem the property, or take other action. The debtor may be able to reaffirm the debt. The debtor may decide to remain legally obligated to pay a debt so that the debtor can keep the property, securing the debt. This is called reaffirming a debt. The debtor may reaffirm the debt in full on its original terms, or the debtor and the creditor may agree to change the terms. For example, if the debtor wants to keep a car, the debtor may reaffirm a car loan, stating that the debtor will continue to make monthly payments for it only reaffirm those debts that the debtor is confident that he can repay. The debtor may seek to reaffirm the debt by signing a reaffirmation agreement, which is really a contract between the debtor and a creditor, and the debtor follows the proper procedure for the reaffirmation agreement. The debtor may be able to redeem the property. The debtor can redeem property only if all of the following apply. First, the property secures a debt that is a consumer debt. That is, the debtor incurred the debt primarily for personal, family, or household use. Second, the property is tangible personal property. The property is physical, such as furniture, appliances, and cars. And third, the debtor is claiming the property as exempt or the trustee has already abandoned it. To obtain court authorization to redeem property, the debtor must file a motion with the court. If the court grants the motion, the debtor pays the creditor the value of the property or the amount of the claim, whichever is less. The payment must be made in a single lump sum payment. Now, let's talk about leased personal property. The debtor must explain what the debtor intends to do with the leased personal property. If the debtor leases personal property, such as a car, 
The debtor may be able to continue the lease if the trustee does not assume the lease. To continue the lease, the debtor can write to the lessor that the debtor wants to assume the lease. The creditor may, at its option, notify the debtor that it's willing to have the debtor assume the lease and may condition the assumption on cure of any outstanding default. If the, letter notify, if the lessor notifies the debtor that it's willing to have the debt assumed, the debtor must write to the lessor within 30 days stating that the debtor assumes the lease. Now, let's turn our attention to this bankruptcy form with a line-by-line -line analysis and with real-world commentary. I hope you enjoy this video. Now, let's go and look at the actual statement of intent. Notice in the upper left-hand corner is the familiar box that fills in the debtor name and the bankruptcy court where it's going to be filed and any case number. So let's look at it carefully. At the top, it says, fill in this information to identify your case. First, it says, identify debtor one. So let's do that. That'll be George Washington. And also identify debtor two, Martha Washington. And we have to identify the United States Bankruptcy Court where this case has been filed. This, in this example, it's the Eastern District of Virginia. So let's use the pull down menu, scroll down and look for the Eastern District of Virginia. And there it is, so let's click on it. Next, we have to identify the case number. So let's assume that this statement of intent was filed after the petition was filed. Therefore, the debtor would know the bankruptcy case number, so let's include it. And over to the right is a checkbox to say, check if this is an amended filing. If the statement of intention is an amended filing, we'll check that box. But in this particular case of George and Martha Washington, it is not an amended filing, so I'm going to uncheck the box. You'll note that the form has an official number. It's official form 108, and it's titled Statement of Intention for Individuals Filing Under Chapter 7. So let's read the directions together. If you are an individual filing under Chapter 7, you must fill out this form if creditors have claims secured by your property or you have leased personal property and a lease has not expired. You must file this form with the court within 30 days after you file your bankruptcy petition or by the date set for the meeting of creditors, whichever is earlier, unless the court extends the time for cause. You must also send copies to the creditors and lessors you list on the form. If two married people are filing together in a joint case, both are equally responsible for supplying correct information. Both debtors must sign and date the form. Be as complete and accurate as possible. If more space is needed, attach a separate sheet to this form. On the top of any additional pages, write your name and the case number if known. So let's scroll down. Part 1 states, list your creditors who have secured claims. Line 1 states, for any creditors that you listed in Part 1 of Schedule D, creditors who have claims secured by property, fill in the information below. And you'll note there's three columns. The first column says, identify the creditor and the property that is collateral. The second column states, what do you intend to do with the property that secures the debt? And the third column is did you claim the property as exempt on Schedule C? So let's fill out the first creditor for George and Martha Washington, which is GMAC, a car loan. So the creditor's name, GMAC. Next, we must insert a description of the property and make sure the description of the property here in the statement of intent is the same description that would show up in Schedule A slash B as an asset and show up in Schedule D as the collateral for the secured debt. Next, we go to the middle column. What do you intend to do with the property that secures a debt? Well, the debtors, George and Martha Washington, cannot afford to pay for the Chevy Malibu, so they want to surrender it. So you're going to check the first box saying surrender the property. There are other alternatives, by the way, would be retain the property and redeem it. That means that they would keep the property and pay in a single lump sum the value of the property to the creditor, but they can't afford to do that because they don't have any means to pay it. The third option would be retain the property.